you know, the, the reality is that the food in America is, um, you know, America for us, for European is ex um, excess. Everything is an excess. Everything is uh, multiplicated by 10. Okay. So music is the best music. This is the best, you know, everything is so loud and strong. And on food, they are multiplicated by 10, but unfortunately not on the quality side, but on the quantity side. Welcome to the Calorie Conundrum Podcast with Coach Strick. Join us as we expand the weight loss conversation to beyond just calories and dare to ask the question, why does eating less and exercising more sometimes not produce the desired results? Here's Coach Strick to discuss this calorie conundrum. Hello and welcome to the Calorie Conundrum Podcast. This is Coach Strick and on today's episode, we have a treat for you. And by treat, I mean pizza. Loved by many, pizza is associated with many things in American culture. Parties, Friday nights, the big game. But pizza is rarely associated with one thing, and that is weight loss. Italian chef Pasquale Cozzolino changed this perception when he lost 100 pounds in one year eating pizza every day. If you like pizza and you want to lose weight, listen as Chef Pasquale tells us about the pizza diet. Chef Pasquale, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thanks. So we have a, an interesting guest on today, another chef. We've had other chefs on the show, but this chef has a specialty, and that is a, Italian food, correct? Correct. And, and um, uh, he kind of became semi-famous from his book and his diet that he followed, uh, which is the pizza diet. So chef, I really want to, I know the audience really wants to hear about this pizza diet, but before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about your history? Um, why you want to become a chef and then how that transferred into this pizza diet? Okay. So I, I did the culinary art school in Italy uh, when I was uh, 14 years old. I started in Naples, uh, Italy. And uh, over there, uh, I was lucky because it, I was studying as a chef and the same year I applied, they put a wood fire oven in the school. So I learned at the same time to be a pizza maker as well, which is a d different job. Usually or you are a pizza maker or you are a chef. I'm lucky to be both. So um, the idea to have a pizza every day uh, is something that comes when I was a kid because in my family, pizza was a, lux uh, 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 a luxury stuff. You know, going to the restaurant uh, in Italy is very expensive, especially for a, a normal family, you know, like my family. So my mom allowed us to go to the restaurant just once a month. In that case, uh, I, my dream was that one day I would be a, a, a pizza chef because I want to eat pizza every day. That's one of the reasons the pizza diet uh, <laughs> born. Um, after years working in Italy, uh, in 2011, I decided to move uh, in the uh, United States of America, in New York City. And uh, I gained so much weight in New York because, you know, the food here is very, there is a lot of variety of food in New York City. And then uh, at the same time, I was going to learn how to uh, run a restaurant in New York, which is a, a totally different animal compared to, to Italy, Europe in general. So I went uh, all over eating, uh, trying burger fries. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorites was Oreos. So I gained so much weight. And uh, at some point, I, I, you know, all my life I was always not skinny, but, uh, you know, in a normal shape. But in the United States of America, I became so fat, so big, so unhealthy, uh, I reached uh, 370 pounds, my max uh, weight. I'm 6'6", I'm six, six, you know, I'm a tall guy, but still it was a lot of, uh, a lot of weight. So uh, with my nutritionist, we came up with the idea to create a, a, a diet where my favorite food was the center of the diet. In this case, in my case, it was the pizza. Of course, you gotta create a pizza, a special pizza, which is uh, not the regular pizza that you have every day because, you know, is uh, regular pizza is considered junk food in general. But this specific pizza, 
it was, I was lucky because Neapolitan pizza in specific is very healthy by itself. I just need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more changes just to perform even better than uh, the Neapolitan base, you know, the Neapolitan uh, old recipe. And that's how the pizza diet came up. I lost uh, more than 100 pounds in uh, about a year. And uh, I was uh, in uh, my restaurant and a journalist was coming over to do an interview to my recipes. And then she saw me from the previous shape. There was a, you know, huge uh, and big guy. And then I was, a big, and then I became so skinny. So she asked me, how, how did you lose all those, all those weight, all those uh, kilos? And, uh, and then I told her about the story of the pizza diet. And she said, wait, let's for, uh, forget about the, the, the interview for the recipe for your restaurant. I want to do something on this pizza diet. So, so we're working on it. And after a month, she, they tried it in the, in, the, in the New York Post office. They tried my diet, a few of them. It worked. And they decided to give me by the front page of the New York Post and three full pages inside. And also the story became viral all over the world <laughs> until the point that on LinkedIn, uh, Penguin Random House started to write me a message to say, we are interested to write a book on, uh, on your diet. At the beginning, I, I thought it was a scam, so I didn't answer. Yeah. And then they tried again and say, maybe you didn't see the previous email, blah, blah, blah. I say, let, let me answer these guys. I don't know. So it, they were real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we published cool. the, a year after we published the book about the pizza diet. This is my long story short. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool story. Uh, <laughs> you, a lots lots of things you covered there. Uh, one of the first things that you said or you discussed was the fact that you came to America and you put on all this weight. Now you, as a chef. You had you had an excuse like you wanted to try the different cuisines, the different restaurants, the different types of food. But I've, I've heard it from multiple people that have come from other countries to the United States. They they gain weight and they're not chefs. <laughs> so what, 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 do you, what, what do you have to say about that? I think one of the you know, the, the reality is that the food in America is, um, you know, America for us, for European is ex um, excess. Everything is an excess. Everything is uh, multiplicated by 10. Okay. So music is the best music. This is the best, you know, everything is so loud and strong. And on food, they are multiplicated by 10, but unfortunately, not on the quality side, but on the quantity side, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think uh, too much sugar, too much fat, too much butter, too much these and and, and 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 even the the way is grown you know even uh, meat uh, with antibiotics and hormones and blah 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 i think all this thing together uh is one of the is a, one of the reasons that makes you gain weight easier compared to food that you can have in in, in europe just to just to give you an, an some numbers in in united states in united states of america fda approved 280,000 and something uh, ingredients that in Europe are totally banned. All right. So <laughs> just these numbers can tell you a lot about why people can wait in the United States of America. Yeah, it's uh, people just are clueless of like what they're allowing in food and what's banned in other countries, like you just stated. And people are just shoveling this stuff down. Uh, uh, and a lot of those ingredients that you're talking about are ingredients that that are like flavor enhancers that make it taste exactly. better than it actually is. And and those things weigh on your body as far as toxic load and, you know, your detox pathways and things like that. Absolutely, so, yeah. Yeah. And so that's part of the reason why people are, you know, gaining weight when they come to America and start eating American food. Yeah. So you and said you go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So you said you lost 100 pounds in a year on this yeah. pizza diet. So what exactly is this pizza diet that you they're talking about here? Okay, pizza diet, you know, the, the diet pizza are two words that uh, usually don't, don't go together, right? Yeah. So the publisher, uh, it was a, a provocative title. 
because at the end of the day, it's not a really diet, but it's a lifestyle. So you really substitute a lot of ingredients, a lot of food that usually a person that gain weight easily uh, have every day with a lot of uh, um, a routine that you do every day. So just to give you uh, uh, an example of a typical day. So we, we started in the morning with a, uh, 70% between lunch and breakfast of your daily calories. Because uh, uh, we, with my, res my nutritionist, we, uh, and, and then a lot of the scientists uh, research, they found out that the body, human body in the beginning of the day burns a lot of uh, calories. Is a, let's say as an example, in the, mo in the morning, your body is a Lamborghini, is a Ferrari. So going through the day, it become a, a regular car, and then at night it become a scooter, okay? So a bike. So in the beginning, it burns a lot of calories. During the, through the day, your metabolism slow down. So the idea is to put the pizza only on breakfast, between breakfast and lunch. I put it at early lunch at 12, the pizza with a lot of vegetables. And the and the and the, the breakfast is eggs, uh, fruit, uh, oatmeal, you know, yogurt. Every day you change one of these uh, ingredients. Um, and at night you just have a protein with uh, a lot of veggies too. And the last meal is at six p.m. All right. So if you try this uh, routine, I promise you, anybody, any type, any age, any gender will lose weight. Because it's a mechanical, it's something that works, it's a simple math. And another thing that the United States of America uh, demonize is our carbs. Carbs are totally fine to eat if, they are the, if uh, the carbs are good quality carbs. If you eat bleached flour or you eat a pizza that is fermented just for two hours because it's full of uh, uh, chemical yeast, yes, it is uh, harmful for yourself. But if you have a long fermented dough, like the pizza diet dough, which is uh, fermented at least for 24 hours, the, the, the gluten is totally broken down. The sugar inside is very low. The content of salt is very low. The content of water is uh, super high, is about 80%. So you have much more water than flour. At that point, that pizza, the whole pie, 12 inch pizza is only between 580, 600 calories. You know, it's exactly a, a perfect meal. And on a pizza, you, put, you can put vegetables, tomato, little mozzarella. Mozzarella doesn't have sugar. So all these things are very important for your body. Carbs are the fuel for your brain. If you take carbs out, your body starts to burn muscles instead to burn carbs. So you lose weight, yes, when you eat only proteins, but you're burning yourself. You're burning your bones, your blood contents, and your muscles. So you, the diet, the perfect diet is a balance of everything. You don't have to get rid of na nothing in your diet, in your lifestyle. Yeah. So I, uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about how your pizza is different than the yep. average pizza, but I, I have people in their mind right now thinking, I'm just going to order pizza, have it delivered <laughs> to my house uh, uh, for lunch <laughs> or whatever. And it's it's probably a different pizza than what you're talking about. Can can you expand on your your yes. type of pizza? Okay, so uh, Neapolitan pizza is a very old recipe. It started in uh, around the 1600 in uh, Naples. It comes from uh, a regular uh, flatbread that you can find all over Mediterranean Sea, as the pita. You know, pita, pita, the T, the Roman pronounced Z. So the pita become pizza. It's mm. a, a, any flat bread has a, almost the same name. This recipe was made with the poor ingredients. People that didn't have too much money to make pizza. So they started with the flour, yeast, water, and uh, a little sea salt. This is the pizza napoletan. There is no eggs, no butter, no, no, no the oil. Stuff crust. Not, not, all right? So just that uh, base is very uh, healthy. On top of it, because at the time uh, there wasn't existing any refrigerator, they put uh, the, the dough to ferment in the cellar where they were they were uh, fermenting the wine. So the dough was there for about 24 hours, and then the, all the ingredients inside, all the flour, the gluten, 
at the time to process so that your body doesn't have to digest the gluten because it's already digested in the fermenting process. What I did, I just increased, so the recipe is, uh, I can tell you the recipe in, in grams. So I just did increase, increase the, the, the content of water. I decreased the content of salt. And then I used the best quality of flour, which is a uh, stone meal flour. We, you can use even zero, zero, but the stone meal would be the perfection. So the, on one kilo of flour, let's say it's a 2.2 pounds of flour, you have to put 80% of water. Just one, one uh, half ounce of uh, fresh yeast and only 3%, uh, two, sorry, 2% 2 of sea salt. That, this is the recipe, very simple. And then you mix all everything together. You leave it outside for a, uh, about two hours. Then you put a refrigerator, you put it in the refrigerator and you wait the next day. And then the next day you start to, and then you, then the next day, uh, can you hear me? You're good. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So the next day uh, you are able to uh, cut the bits in pieces and then you stretch it out and you put uh, your ingredients on top. This is the very simple recipe. Very, four ingredients, no more than that. If you want a comparison with the American pizza or uh, Korean pizza, whatever is coming from, they use uh, almost 40% of water. So half of the water that I'm using the Neapolitan, the Neapolitan pizza. And they use uh, about eight ounces, eight ounces of yeast to ferment the dough in uh, about two, three hours. So the gluten is not broken down. You're eating a lot of yeast, a lot of sugar, because when you ferment the sugar goes away, so a slice of New York style pizza has the same calorie of uh, the entire 12 inch pie of pizza diet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's important. Uh, uh, important point to point out is that not only are the main bulk ingredients different in amounts, um, but the other ingredients that that aren't in your pizza that are in the other pizza, like I kind of mentioned about before, are in the other kind of pizzas so instead of four ingredients you're talking 40 80 ingredients as far exactly. as the colorings the flavorings uh, all the different sauces and all that uh, you know when you when you think of a sauce in most cases um you think well it's it's you know it's flour yeast water salt and sauce well the sauce itself has probably 20 some ingredients exactly and so in the more case yeah. In my case, the sauce is only tomato, fresh tomato. Even if you buy a can from Italy, you know, San Marzano, you squeeze it with your hands, you put some a little salt, and that's it. And then you put it on the pizza, and the tomato cooks in the oven together with the pizza. You don't need to add anything else. And then you put uh, just a drizzle of uh, extra virgin olive oil, good quality, basil, and some fresh mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella not, doesn't mean the shredded one. The shredded mozzarella, mostly of the time, is uh, hydrogenated fat and a lot of uh, ingredients. You gotta choose just uh, mozzarella that has two ingredients: rennet and milk, and a little salt. That's it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you described your pizza in in full with ten less, you know, ten or so ingredients. Exactly. And in one in one quote unquote ingredient in a regular pizza would have more than 10, in, you know, ingredients, in even each more. ingredient. Yeah. Even yeah. more. And so uh, that's important to point out because, um, you know, when, when you're talking about food and, you know, people want to put a label on something, if it's healthy or not, uh, this is one of the aspects that you need to pay attention to. If you're trying to, you know, see if something is healthy or not, is how many ingredients are they actually using? Exactly. And, exactly. and, and like you're describing your pizza, your pizza, you know, in total has 10 ingredients and these other pizzas have who knows how many ingredients and who knows let's, what ingredients they are. Le, exactly. But let's count, for example, Margarita pizza, which is the cheese pizza in America. So we have a four ingredients for the dough and we have a three ingredients for the toppings. So in total, we have uh, seven ingredients. Yeah, it's very, very simple. And, and you will see, I mean, I have a lot of customers here. They have intolerance to gluten, not celiac disease, which is a, 
a disease. So yeah. that's another another uh, argo- another conversation. But who has intolerant to gluten? People has a difficult to digest the gluten. Eat my pizza. They even have two pizza and they are fine. They are not thirsty. They don't they don't blow like the belly like a full of gas because the process of fermentation already happening outside doesn't have doesn't have to happen in your body, which is happening when you have a very bad uh, made pizza. Yeah. Or, or whatever, you know, any other thing. Yeah. So uh, did it, how long ago was this? Uh, did you lose 100 pounds? OK, basically, um, I lost uh, 100 pounds in t- 2016. In 2018, I, I quit smoking. And uh, I start to eat a, a little bit more <laughs> because I was sub- substituting the cigarette with the sugar uh, yeah. stuff. So I gained a little bit more weight, but now I'm going back to my regular weight. I mean, people that uh, uh, normally gain weight very easy, you have to be on lifestyle all your life. This is something we bring with us. It doesn't exist any solution as long as you do some uh, surgery. but. I don't suggest that because at the end of the day, it's only about your uh, focus and your uh, motivation. Uh, it's not easy. I understand it's not easy. That's why Pizza Diet came up because you put your favorite food at the center of your diet and then uh, you lose weight much easier and much uh, more happy than uh, any other uh, diet. I'm, I'm telling you, when I quit smoking, I gained uh, back to 40 pounds. And then I lost back again, and then I lost again another 25 very quick, starting over my diet. And anytime you want to start the diet, you want to eat well and clean, it's the best way to go. That was going to be my next question is, are you currently still on the pizza diet? or? Yeah, currently, yes, because I'm quitting uh, my... Uh, it's for a smoker like me. I used to smoke almost two box a day. Get rid of the cigarettes, uh, it was an addiction. It was like a drug. So yeah. I had to substitute with something very, very sweet. <laughs> yeah. In this case, I <laughs> I use Nutella, which is the worst. <laughs> uh, so it's my bad. It's my, I shouldn't say that. But, you know, it, it, I, I want to share my experience because it's very important for people like me. They gain weight easy and then they have extra pounds. And it's very nice to share and then give uh, my experience to give an experience as other people, you know? Yeah, they, I'm sure they appreciate that. But what are some, uh, you know, advice you would give those people if they're in the kind of similar situation? Maybe they're a smoker or maybe it's something else that they're trying to, you know, change their lifestyle. And then they kind of get on something else, you know, and their weight starts creeping up. What are some, what are some tips, some advice you might give those kind of people? I think uh, the one of the first advice is uh, to be more more culturated about food. So study a little bit more about which uh, food to eat and which one you don't eat. Um, there is a lot of uh, uh, no knowledge about food in uh, in the United States of America because we are not used to. We are not, you know there is a, a school there is no there is no tradition. Uh, a school or in the house that teach you how to eat properly and healthier. So the, the first thing is a, a study. A read a lot of, you know, this, there is my book, but there is so many other books that speak up about uh, how to eat better and uh, start to read the, the, the label where there are the ingredients. And when you go to shop in the, in the supermarket, just start to uh, pick some ingredients that you want to have in your diet. You know, reading and studying, you will see which one has to be off of your of your body, and then you will see that automatically you won't buy a lot of uh, stuff. <laughs> and be, you know, just this is a good start. And uh, after, start to cook uh, or go to restaurant that follow uh, rules about uh, healthy food, healthy eating, either. Eating. This is my advice. Um, you will we, you will feel so much better. You will feel so much energy back to your body, and then you feel, will feel less depressed, less anxiety, and uh, at some point you will see that uh, it's worth it, uh, this change, which is not easy, 
Mm. It's not a it's not a, a walk on the park, but uh, at the end of the day, you will see you will love it. Yeah, so this point that you just made, I think, is one of the most important points that um, I think could be brought up on the podcast. And uh, how I describe what you just said is, um, when it comes to my personal food choices, I have like what I call core values around food choices, and so. I have a, a mental list of ingredients that I don't consume. And so exactly. just, just like you said, uh, when you go into the store, those items that have those ingredients are no longer awesome. an option. Yeah, they're off, exactly. the, off the table. And the problem I see with so many people in today's society is that everything's on the table everything's on the table they can they can have the donuts they can have the pizza they can have the soda they can have the nutella they can have it all they don't have any restrictions and then they wonder why they're overweight again wait because <laughs> <they're, laughs> everything's uh, available to them and and nowadays you, you got uber and you got these delivery apps where you don't even have to leave your house to get this stuff i mean they'll bring it to you and so Absolutely. for me personally i i, I like to kind of convey this message that you just brought up is that you have to have some core values around what you're eating. And like you said, the first step to developing and coming up with those core values is figuring out what's in your food and what you're willing to eat and what you're going to, you know, take off the menu. Per se. Exactly. Yeah. And so that that's like, I hope people like, get that point. What, what you're, what you're the point you're trying to make here, because uh, that's how, that's how I've, you know, structured my eating habits and p people, they, they, it sounds like a, such a scary, bad thing to people when you say, oh, I take this item out of my diet or I don't eat this. Uh, but when you do it, it makes it so much easier Absolutely. because, because you don't have to be tempted by all these other ingredients that are in our foods huh. because they have ingredients that you've X'd off your list. Absolutely. And, and now and nowadays, you know, the health food companies have realized that people are wanting healthy food. So even the foods that before, you know, might have been, quote unquote, unhealthy, they're, they're healthier versions being made every day. And so just like pizza, where you can get the stuffed crust pizza with five million ingredients in one slice that are, you know, 600 calories in one slice, you can also have your pizza that has seven ingredients, <laughs> it's exactly. 500 calories. And yeah, that's, exactly. A, that's exactly the, the point. And another thing you, you, you got to be careful of uh, addicting ingredients, which in America, they put a lot of uh, hidden sugar everywhere. Even there is a lot of a healthy food in America that are fake healthy. The packaging is healthy. The message is healthy. Everything is healthy, but at the end of the day, you go to back the, the back of the label is not at it, uh, healthy at all because there is sugar inside. And, uh, and the worst one is a uh, corn syrup that uh, it brings up your glycemic so high that your body become addicted to it, and your body is demanding even more of that ingredient. That's a joke of the in the, the company because they do it on purpose to let uh, your body ad be addicted of it. And that's why you cannot get rid of it. You know, that's a uh, consciousness and knowledge helps you to 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 get a better a better life, healthy life. Yeah, the other chef I had on my show, uh, we we went into depth about talking about the addiction factor and that it's a real thing, and um, that these companies know what they're doing when it comes to getting you to eat more. And so sugar is just one of them, and they 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 got wise because people started learning that sugar is not so good for you. So they started changing the name and now it's, you know, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, anything that ends when O O S E is a sugar. And yes. so and then, and or then maybe have, codes. So now they use codes to, to, to yeah. To... Yeah. In, in the European countries and other countries, they use numbers and all this numbers. Other stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, and basically it just means that it's either a chemical or a sugar, one of the two or both. Um, and people are kind of. Um, we have a, a beautiful. We have a beautiful weapon. Now. So, yeah, uh, the name is uh, Google. 
So you can Google the number, you can Google the ingredients and see what, what uh, what's going on. You know, what, what, what is uh, that ingredients? So let's yeah. use it. I, that's what I do. When I do to shop, I always Google every ingredients uh, that I didn't hear about it before. And that's the, the, the best way to, to get uh, consciousness. Yeah. And when you, the more you know, the more you uh, know what to, you know what Perfected. actions yeah yep. more ac what actions to take and what uh what to do and what not to do exactly so that's, that's some really great information um i don't i don't think the uh, listeners were ready for a pizza guy to be talking about <laughs> this kind of stuff but it's it's a uh, hundred percent on target so chef yeah. uh if uh the listeners would want to find out more about you or get in contact with you how would they go about doing that so oh uh I have a lot of uh, easy way to connect with me is uh, Instagram is uh, at Chef Cozzolino. If you want to spell with your accent is better, maybe. <laughs> so uh, it's C-O-Z-Z-O-L-I-N-O. -Z -Z correct. Right. Chef Cozzolino. And uh, on Facebook, on Twitter and uh, Instagram, I have the same, uh, the same hashtag, the, the same uh, name. So yeah. and you know, over there you can find my emails and you can connect with me very easy. And don't forget your book, the Pizza Diet. That you can yeah, find that if, on Amazon and whatnot. Yeah, you can find my book on Amazon, on Google. Uh, there is a in the Barnes and Noble, in um, uh, what's the name again? Uh, electronic electronic version, uh, uh, Kindle, you know, everywhere. Yeah. 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 So. And uh, you know, the book. The book uh, don't don't expect the classic diet is uh, most most uh, uh, a guide to yeah. how to change your lifestyle and how to choose your food at the at the supermarket at the grocery store. So it's very nice. There is a fifty recipe of pizza that you can uh, you can create by yourself, or you can tell you know you. I think in Neapolitan pizza. Is the one closest to the pizza diet, uh, though. So uh, you can find easy everywhere in the United States now a, a good Neapolitan pizza. So you just tell the pizza maker how do you want your pizza, and they will tell they will do it for you. If you're not, if you don't have time to to cook, cook uh, or prepare your dough. So, so you uh, made a new wave, <laughs> new wave of uh, types of pizza. I mean, I'm sure it's old, like you said, but you brought it here and you kind of made it famous by using it yeah. to lose a whole bunch of weight and then lose some more weight after you quit smoking. And so it's yeah. been tested and uh, people are using it. And uh, thanks for being on the show today, Chef. No, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I'm honored always all the time when uh, people are um, on the same page and uh, they listen the message because it's uh, it's very important, especially for the new generations. Exactly. So, I mean, there's so much inf misinformation out there, and it it really comes down to some basic health and nutrition tenets. And one of those is you are what you eat. Your and best so, your best medication is what you eating uh, and how you eating. Exactly. That's the best medication. There you go. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Ciao, ciao. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Chef Pasquale. In each episode of the Calorie Conundrum podcast, there are some golden nuggets of information, and this episode was no exception. Chef Pasquale talked about the quality and the preparation of food, and how important that is. He discussed the importance of knowing what is in the food you are eating, and how sugar is addicting. He also hit on one of the topics that I am very passionate about, and that is what I call nutrition core values or core values around food you consume. When discussing this with people, one way I show the power of these core values is by asking the question, do you think it is hard for a vegan to be a vegan? If you are a vegan or know any vegans, then you know this is an easy question. The answer is no, it is not hard for a vegan to be a vegan. Then I would ask a second follow-up question, why? The answer is because vegans have a set of core values that make being a vegan easy. They want to save the animals, they are adhering to religious beliefs, or they are passionate about being a vegan for some other reason. But the moral of the story is that they have core values around what they consume and what they do not consume. 
I'm not saying you have to shun meat or pizza or anything, but like I said in the interview, I think it would help most people to have at least some core values when it comes to food. That could be as dramatic as not eating any animal products to as simple as going one day a week without drinking soda. Anyway, this is just some food for thought. And for Chef Pasquale, that food is pizza. And with that said, this is Coach Strick saying thanks for listening. And remember, when calories in, calories out doesn't work, that, my friend, is a calorie conundrum. This podcast, including Coach Strick and guests, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects for the use of any information contained herein. Coach Strick and or guests may recommend products or services in which they have a direct or indirect financial interest. To find out more, please visit www.calorieconundrum.com.